Hello and welcome to Psyched, the show where we explore psychedelics through social, economic, and political perspectives. Let's introduce our last speaker of the day. Last up, we have Simeon Schnapper. Simeon is a lifelong student of psychedelics and has a keen awareness of the cultural, regulatory, and nascent venture landscape of the mushrooming industry. He has traveled the globe participating in psychedelic conferences to living with indigenous communities. He co-founded the High Art Collective in 2008, the world's first psychedelic art gallery, and Double MJ Dispensary, praised as a paradigm shift at the very beginning of the end of prohibition. Simeon advises several psychedelic startups, is a founding partner at JLS, a plant medicine fund, is an Aspen Institute fellow, and a member of NYMS, the New York Mycology Society. Simeon, thank you so much for joining us, and welcome to Psyched. Awesome. Uh, Merrick, just a uh, fantastic job. I, you know, obviously didn't watch every single uh, presentation, but uh, just uh, bravo to you and your team. Um, so my story, um, let me go back. I was listening to everybody else's presentation, just trying to be really open to what to present. So I've thrown away a few presentations and then created new ones. Um, but let me start with you know my discovery and how I got into this quote unquote space. I was a, uh, I think I was uh, shortly after my bar mitzvah. I think that was the last time I was Jewish. I was looking for something more spiritual and I was rummaging through my dad's basement and I was going through a box and I came across two books. The first one was The Only Dance There Is by Bob Ram Das, and the second was The Dyadic Cyclone by John C. Lilly. And I read them and something just opened up. Um, and I asked my parents, I'm like, what is this all about? What's this, you know, spirituality about? And what's this guy talking about named Ram Das? And why is John C. Lilly swimming with dolphins and doing ketamine? Um, they didn't necessarily have the answers, but in a strange synchronicity, about a year later, a couple years later, uh, I had the great uh, uh, synchronicity of uh, uh, getting to study with uh, Robert Masters and Gene Houston, who wrote the seminal book, uh, Varieties of Psychedelic Experiences. Uh, I think it was the classic guide to the effects of LSD on the human psyche was the exact title, but that kind of became my guidebook. Um, and during that time, I remember too, I, I just wanted to learn as much as I could. And again, this is, you know, 30 plus years ago. Um, so back then, uh, there was this ancient technology called a, uh, an envelope and a postage stamp. And I remember I heard about maps, I think. And I asked my mom for, I, I think it was like a newsletter subscription of like a buck or five bucks. Uh, whatever it was went before it was called the bulletin and I got my first newsletter and I just, you know, something, uh, something was just amazing about it. So I, you know, even back then kind of, you know, just took it upon myself to learn as much as I could and as fast as I could and, um, still barely know anything, but been at it as a, a student for, for a few decades. Um, Anyway, so my presentation, just because you know, I know today was a lot of policy and listening to the other things, um, I was gonna talk about the venture landscape and what I'm seeing um, and what's happening, and how it's similar and how it's different. Uh, but I do wanna bring it into context a bit. So let me share my screen. I did actually uh, put a presentation together. I know I only have 26 minutes left, so I'm gonna whip through it. I couldn't get it under 180 pages. Um, Hopefully this will go quick. All righty. Share. All right. You should be able to see my screen. Um, okay. So uh, kind of shared a little bit on my backstory. Let's just go through a, a quick list of, uh, you know, the classic psychedelics. Oops. So we have mushrooms. 
four ACO DMT and DMT, five VMO DMT, uh, DMT, ayahuasca, Datura, uh, Ibogaine. Love the last two speakers um, and the ones before that. So the last three speakers, uh, very informative. Uh, combo, ketamine, Kratom, LSD, MDMA, mescaline, peyote, salvia, San Pedro, 2CB. Um, so again, before I go into the venture landscape, just want to set some context. So it's been talked about throughout this whole conference, but there's obviously a zeitgeist occurring right now. Um, we're seeing it in you know, books and papers and on the news. Um, you're seeing things like, you know, the mainstream uh, starting to cover it with Gwyneth Paltrow's cube. Um, my mom uh, emailed me uh, last week because she was, you know, flicking through uh, uh, Netflix. So, you know, when your mom starts uh, uh, letting you know about what's happening in the quote unquote uh, psychedelic scene, uh, that's pretty interesting. Uh, one of the signals I always like to look for, regardless of what the industry is, is, you know, freedom and creativity, um, because those will uh, and often do impact societal change. We're definitely in a moment of that right now, right? Um, so I'm starting to see some things come out that I wouldn't normally see in, uh, you know, more conservative uh, domains. Uh, I met uh, uh, Kristen uh, about seven months ago at the United Nations. It was an impact conference, uh, sustainable development goals. And was really blown away by how she was integrating, um, you know, psychedelics into her art uh, as a, you know, social psychologist and anthropologist. So it was a very big signal. Then on the flip side, when you see things like this happening in society, uh, this did not actually occur. There was lockdown in Oakland before it did, but this was a startup, uh, Stone Gamer League, um, that had a competition where uh, eight players would be picked. Uh, uh, each of them would have to eat an eighth of mushrooms and they have six hours to build something in Minecraft. And then at the end of that, uh, or the next day, depending on the effects, uh, celebrity artists would judge their, their creativity. So it's very interesting to see signals like that creeping in to the mainstream as well. Uh, other creative endeavors I've seen is, you know, all of the infused dinner shifting more to a psychedelic focus. This was one in a very prominent uh, a jurisdiction um, that had uh, not just cannabis, but uh, microdosing uh, available as well. I think Nate covered that in a few presentations ago. Um, that was interesting. Also, you know, in the past, I, you know, and I have to find myself going to either the underground or um, Horizons, like over a decade ago, uh, anything MAPS ever did, flying to like Basel, Switzerland for the World Psychedelic Forum. Uh, but something started happening, at least in my perception, at the beginning of this year, and I presented at uh, Jeff Siegel's uh, Green Chip Stock Psychedelic Summit. And what was really cool about that, and I'm hearing it a lot in this conversation too, is these, you know, contentious different parties. Um, and I make that point only because uh, it was a full day event with a lot of psychedelic companies, a lot of investors. Um, activists, a, a good kind of sampling of what the industry is for, for the readers of this one particular uh, periodical. Um, and in that, uh, I reached out to Dean Chamberlain. It was really cool. Dean's one of my favorite psychedelic artists. He did a portrait of psychedelic pioneers. And I'm like, hey, we're, you know, I'm, I'm participating in this thing. Would you, you know, want to talk for a second or bring some of your art? And uh, it was nice because it was exactly 10 years from the day that he, uh, we opened his show in my psychedelic art gallery and medical marijuana dispensary at the time. Um, and what I witnessed there was, you know, these, these disparate forces. So, you know, in these pictures I found, I just snapped a couple of these. So that's Dean, the artist. And what you have there is, you know, what everybody's talking about, what's going to happen in this industry, everybody getting along, everybody agreeing, everyone being right for their own particular path. So you had, you know, MindMed and JR and Carlos from Peak from Nature, Jason from Orthogonal and Emotional uh, or EI Ventures. And, you know, Dean was effectively answering their questions about what it was like back in the day since he was close with all of the people who are featured in his portrait of psychedelic pioneers. So it's just an interesting observation. The very next night, 
I had the great pleasure of presenting at uh, Sarah's uh, show, which uh, drug drug uh, uh, drug show drug. Just say no. Um, in New York. And it was a very different audience, you know? It was not just underground psychedelic people, but some mainstream people who wanted to come see theater. And the entire show was very open. So I, I just saw this huge shift happening in January of 2020. Um, I do want to break in and give some context to, uh, you know, different segments before I jump into how we look at, you know, different pockets or different buckets of the industry. But um, the first retreat I went to, I think it was 12 years ago, Sylvia, just in Brazil, an ayahuasca retreat, and then have, you know, explored a lot of them over the years, not just as a participant, but where is their business model um, and how the psychedelics make it different if it's a retreat. Uh, so you see a lot of things coming up. Rhythmia did a great job when they opened. Uh, you have, you know, one-time things. This feels very burnery. This happened in Costa Rica uh, before lockdown. Uh, Boga Quest um, isn't a retreat, it's actual uh, Ibogaine Center. Um, I spent a week there kind of doing a retreat after the 2015 Global Ibogaine Therapist Lines Conference, where it was just everybody who's anybody who cares about addiction, the plant, a lot of the topics uh, that you know you touch base in on the, uh, with the last speakers. Um, Others, Brain and Behavior Institute, you have Inward Bound, you have Guide Tripping. Um, and for those, you know, who are curious, obviously it's been touched upon by a lot, but there's a lot of different um, uh, centers popping up, some that existed, some of that are able to come out. Um, Silo, Opman, uh, obviously Synthesis, um, uh, one of my favorite, Truffles Therapy and the people who run that. Um, and then you have, you know, other things of, of signals like this, which I've, I haven't gotten the full story, but one anecdote I heard was um, it was uh, uh, mushrooms for a bachelorette party, which I, I in immediately had the thought, but then I, I learned that they didn't necessarily go well in that, you know, what psychedelics do even for the recreational is they, they show you themselves. So apparently there were a few things where you know, the bride decided he wasn't the right guy and she was forced into it. And, or some of the bridesmaids said, hey, I'm not in a happy uh, relationship. So cautionary tale on anyone who's uh, got a startup trying to do uh, parties around these incredibly uh, 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 powerful substances. Um, Psychedelic Society is doing a bunch, a whole new high. I, I brought this up just because, you know, when you start to see design and technology uh, really uh, come into focus, uh, uh, it, it's, a, it's an interesting signal. I'll just show a few of these that I grabbed. Beautiful design. The exploration, New Moon Psychedelic Retreats, um, Rise Wellness, who's working with some of the startups, which we'll feature later. Um, so this is one of my favorite Leary quotes, LSD is a psychedelic drug, which occasionally causes psychotic behavior in people who have not taken it. Um, uh, this was you know, covered expertly uh, by so many of the other speakers. So I'll just whip through this, but obviously uh, there's uh, uh, decriminalization is happening. This was the first time I saw uh, entheogenic plant in an actual uh, political document. It's very exciting to see that last year. Nature, uh, Chicago, that's where I'm from. Uh, that was very exciting to see. There's a lot behind that story. Um, Ann Arbor, family up there. Obviously everything, I you know Tom and Sherry presented, Sam Chapman, uh, I don't know if he presented on this one. It's hard to remember. There's like a gazillion conferences now. Uh, but yes, uh, IP34, all the stuff that's you know happening almost daily in Canada, the E2534. Um, uh, still getting to the bottom of this. I can't quite figure out what, <laughs> what the, uh, the bill was. Um, I think you have uh, Dana speaking Saturday or Monday. He, I think he's gotten to the bottom of just how ridiculous that was, but uh, it's still a signal. Uh, DC shows up in the mail. Uh, you heard Will, uh, Decrim California. 
and then the Godfather, uh, uh, the Godfather of Bikram, uh, you know, I'm so uh, elated uh, about the maturation of what Kevin did with uh, uh, Denver and now what Spore will become. Um, and here's some other signals that aren't necessarily psychedelic, but they're on the fringe. So uh, actually one of your other speakers, uh, Will, uh, I'm sorry, not Will, um, Craig, uh, also leads this. And this is a super cool nonprofit in Brooklyn. I'm kind of a new New Yorker, uh, but I checked it out and I was, I learned more in, I think it was like a five hour session. I learned more than Craig than the dozens of books I had read previously in like one session. Um, so you're starting to see, you know, really cool things around mycology happening. And this is just my kind of local view of what, what I'm participating in, what I'm seeing that are signals for um, what will happen in about, I think, 10 or 20 slides. Like, how is this impacting uh, entrepreneurship, startups, investment, et cetera? Um, again, when I moved here, joined the New York uh, Mycology Society, just a great group where there's tons of learning. Um, the citizen science projects exploding. I mean, well before psychedelics and mycology, but just in general, but I'm just seeing so much uh, fun in, in the citizen science side of what's happening at the, the whole plant level. Um, Michael Flora project is crazy. Uh, some of the really cool stuff at nucleotide, uh, DNA barcoding uh, and how that's changing mycology or any kind of whole plant, uh, if you will. Uh, Michael Flora project, I'd mentioned that. This is a super fun app uh, I've been using. Um, comes called iNaturalist and it's for anything, but there's a really vibrant uh, a mushroom community within that. Uh, here was a trip to LA. I posted this, got like 50 responses of the exact same screen, just crowdsourced through iNaturalist. So it's just a fun app. If you're, uh, you know, doing Instagram, I encourage you, wasting time there, I encourage you to try iNaturalist and contribute to the community, which is, you know, uh, pretty deep, a lot of foragers of that nature and just identifying, but there's a whole bunch of sub communities within that that's building every second. I uh, didn't get a chance to check out the shroom room. I know Paul's speaking in a couple of days or tomorrow, whenever it is. And um, before, you know, COVID hit and there was lockdown, but I consider this, even though it's not psychedelic, um, you know, a really interesting signal. Um, and then contextually, and this is also, you know, this touches upon a lot of the cautionary tale stuff, but uh, we need to learn what this is. And uh, this movement, not this movement, but, but what's happening now and really look back to, you know, the, the core pillars who have been here for decades. Um, so obviously maps, I saw the presentation, I thought I subscribed to every single newsletter, didn't, learned it on one of the presentations last night. So everyone who's watching this, if you're not aware of it, capstone.maps.org is the URL. Takes only, I did it in under a minute, was able to make a contribution. Um, and we'll see uh, how, how high that gets and how fast that gets. But uh, let's see, a lot happening around the education, the research, CIIS, ICERS, Hefter, of course, uh, Beckley, amazing. Um, Mind Medicine's not been on my radar a long time, but I'm really digging what they're doing from the education side, from the, the a policy side, not just for Asia, I'm sorry, not just for Australia, but uh, greater Asia as well. Um, okay, so that was just a little context. Uh, I'm at, shit, Ooh, sorry about that. Running out of time here. Let me whip through this. So when I look at uh, startup companies, and just in general, wherever the industry is going, I think Robert Lurie's uh, if, if you're watching, I, some of these might piss you off um, in following a cannabis playbook, but some are not. Uh, but these are the basic buckets or lenses I look at when we're reviewing companies um, or just trying to find a framework for what's happening in the space today and where it might go. So generally these four buckets. So I'm going to go through a bunch of companies. There's a lot of layover um, between one category and the other. They're not all, you know, uh, specific buckets, but you'll get an idea. Um, but before I go into these companies, just want to give uh, praise to everything that Kat Liana and the whole team over at uh, Northstar are doing. It's one of those moments where like, 
you have, it feels like there's this really short window to get it right. Um, and if any company who's considering getting in the space, if they're not in it already, if they don't read this and support this and understand it, uh, I think they would be doing a disservice not only to the, the industry, but to themselves as a company. Um, I'll go through that. Uh, so the three big ones who are uh, you know, doing clinical trials, you have the Sona, you have MAPS, and you have um, uh, Compass. So I think most of the audience is aware of those. Uh, but one thing I, you know, I wanted to point out, and this was a funny quote that came to me, it was from Carl Lewis, but just on cost, this becomes a big issue. And I don't know if everybody knows, at least right now, not the future, because there's a lot of people waiting for license, but right now, uh, who's making, you know, the quote unquote pharmaceuticals for these trials or these, you know, uh, chemicals for these trials. So Onyx is a big player, uh, Almac, um, Organics, you can see even, you know, prices displayed on their website for the pure compounds, uh, CB Therapeutics, they're also doing some really cool things with a bunch of companies are with, with yeast and algae and other ways to make these compounds, but on the manufacturing side. Uh, Lipomed, uh, Cygen, really love their whole ethos and where they come from. Uh, Biofarm is about to uh, uh, get into it pretty hard. Um, okay, now let's get into some of the companies. You know, um, I forgot who was talking about Unis. Oh, it was Jesse. Jesse was talking about um, uh, Unis. But I just love that quote. That quote. Human beings are much bigger than just making money. I hope everybody remembers that. Uh, Camtech, you know, just figured out a five, uh, not five, a DMTO, basically Foxtrot. Uh, so they're making uh, some leads. Uh, you got Bright Minds, an exceptional deep team there. Um, I think they just posted something about what they're doing on uh, cluster headaches, which is pretty amazing. Just a stellar team. You have Adelia. I know one of the speakers, uh, it was Tuesday, it was from Delia, really like that. Uh, Pure Extracts is just about to make some announcements. I think they've made some announcements, um, um, but it'll be around psilocybin. Uh, Entheon, Tim and Co, uh, Atai, 800 pound Borella right now in the space. Uh, Field Trip, uh, Orthogonal. Uh, which has a subsidiary called Emotional Intelligence. Uh, Silera, similar in construct to natural and reimagining psychoactive natural products. Um, Victor Hugo, there's one thing stronger than all the armies in the world, and that is an idea whose time has come. So we're starting to see these signals. Obviously, everyone's aware of, you know, Spravato, but that was the first big signal. People have seen... You know, again, on the money side, people are seeing valuations like this. Um, very cool. Uh, again, back to, you know, ancillary products. Uh, very cool new delivery devices, uh, specifically hitting, hitting the market. Uh, this would be a, a, a great company in our, you know, the drug discovery and development bucket. Um, MindMed, that's come out, up a lot, I think, even on the last conversation, 18MC. Uh, champions really exploded in the last several months. Um, and if you look at where they were and what they were doing even seven months ago, now with the ultimate acquisition, their whole strategy, um, it's evolving. Uh, Midasin's like brand new. Again, we're, you know, there's a lot of debate around public or private and what's the overall benefit. These are, these are companies. These are live. These are real. Uh, Numinous, I think, uh, just got their uh, Health Canada license amended. Uh, I think that happened yesterday or a couple days ago uh, to be able to uh, conduct research um, and uh, produce and extract psilocybin. Uh, Eleusis, uh, Shlomi, amazing stuff there, what he's been doing over the years. Um, guys who are doing uh, bifurcated strategies, both the nutraceutical and the psychedelic, as well as some big pharmacidins out there. Um, you've got Red Light Holland uh, coming out of the gate really strong. Again, focusing on a rec initially, but as we've seen and other uh, the speakers have commented on, they were this company, now they're everything. You're starting to see um, uh, growth and maturity like that. 
Uh, Jeffrey, I don't know why this isn't a bigger story or somebody hasn't picked it up. Uh, it's a phenomenal one in that it's, it's so embedded and it's in a jurisdiction with a significant population under a medicalized system where, you know, the average dose will never have that uh, uh, equitable access or costing too much. Uh, very, very interesting. I encourage everyone to, to look at what they're up to. Octarine, I mentioned companies doing very cool things with yeast um, and other biosynthesis. Codebase is getting out there. Uh, amazing company that's a pick and shovel play for growing whole plant fungi. You'd buy that unit and then as it's been happening for decades, pick up your, your spores at Little Shop of Spores or something like that. Um, Brooklyn Mines, eHave, I think they presented, was very impressed with what they were doing around blockchain and health records. Um, again, to how fast is this growing, you have Varian, who had uh, two different SKUs, a European company. They just got acquired for 20 million Canadian by Moda Ventures. So it's happening and it's happening fast. Is it a cannabis playbook? I don't know if anybody knows quite yet. The psychedelics are very different. Um, this was one of the first uh, press releases I saw. Again, January was very significant in just watching the industry um, where I'd never thought I'd see a stock ticker in an island in a mushroom. But that had then led to Neon Mind, which was rebranded from Flourish. Uh, Neon Mind uh, was then acquired by Yield Growth. Um, others, Silicon Pharma, I'm running out of time. I uh, love, love these guys and anything, uh, uh, anything algal based. Uh, some very, very cool, sustainable, uh, scalable science there. Um, that's also true of OLP Therapeutics, Mindset, uh, Hollister, again, a cannabis brand doing an acquisition of a functional mushroom brand, publicly traded. Uh, another public company, uh, Wuhan, uh, getting into psychedelics, functional mushrooms, uh, optimization, uh, uh, nutraceuticals, et cetera. Uh, really don't have much time now, but I definitely wanted to touch upon what I'm seeing at the commercial and the private to nonprofit side of the Ibogaine world. Um, three minutes left, let me just go through that. Uh, I'll skip over Ibogaine, uh, ketamine, mind bloom launched. Um, I wasn't sure how this was going to play out. Um, and then I had a personal ketamine experience. I had really severe Lyme disease, so I had this horrible apathy, so I didn't mention ketamine infusions. And I was shocked. This was an early ketamine clinic in Chicago. And when I left the office, I got a text from Mind Monitor or Mood Monitor. And my clinician was able to track me and follow up with me. It was a very cool, unexpected integration of technology um, within the play. Uh, great delivery device, all the delivery device, and Sarah, and again, an amazing team, Wake, uh, Haven, uh, I think your colleague covered this in the previous one, so I won't go through all the different websites that are now selling this stuff. Um, and then last, with two minutes to spare, uh, I just wanted to touch upon all the very cool tech and tech integration and aftercare stuff. Uh, which is a whole other, a uh, whole other deck. Uh, Fluence, Maya, Nana, uh, everything Tyler's doing, uh, Wave Paths, uh, Trans Tech stuff, posts integration, uh, Mind Leap, which just got purchased by New Leaf, which is now rebranded as Midasin. Uh, but I will end it there because I went way too long and didn't a lot for five minutes of questions. Uh, so on that, I'll stop my screen and hopefully there's time for one question. Sorry, I went over there. You're good, man. You're good. This is great. Okay. Um, Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> You're good. Uh, yeah, Kaylee asked um, that what they can get a copy of this. So thank you for, uh, for the link. Oh, yeah. Just uh, do you want me to post it in or just email me? Because I noticed because I was doing all these, there's like pictures of people. Let me strip those out. Just like I think you were in one of them uh, when we all met up. I, one of your events last year. So let me get out the personal stuff and then I'll just send the deck engines.
Sounds good. Sounds good. Um, yes, I mean, I, you know, I, the one question I really want to ask is you've had a taste of so many of these different spheres of art, of the mycology, of the nonprofits, of the for profits. What is specifically drawing you to this approach in regards to uh, engaging with psychedelics? Why is this what's most interesting for you today? It's, it's been interesting for me for 30 years. It just mm -hmm. hasn't been here. You know, when I, when I had to do it, I'd have to go to other, other places or be very secretive about it. So, you know, it's, it's somewhat of a disservice because some of my idols were speaking throughout this conference. Um, and I could say uh, my elders to some extent. Um, so it would be a disservice to say I've been disappointed every few years that the psychedelic renaissance hasn't been here, not just for the healing part of it, but what to do to, you know, entire civilizations. Um, but I had to wait. Mm -hmm. That's why it's, you Definitely. couldn't do this. Like, I mean, even a couple of years ago, I remember when we had the gallery, it really became a community of like, everybody would show up there, you know? So we have, you know, all the great artists and, you know, every speaker and every movie and, you know, they'd all come there and it's like, we couldn't, we could only talk about it. Uh, you know, we weren't going to set up a, a treatment center. We weren't going to, you know, stuff, sell stuff out of the back door, but it was there. And so it's, yeah, it's really interesting to see where it's going to go. Um, I don't know. Did that answer your question? It was basically because now you, you could be in an industry like this, but it didn't, definitely. I mean, it kind of existed, but you know, mm -hmm. no, definitely 100%. And, you know, like, let's say that we're 10 years from now that we're sitting uh, on your terrace, uh, you know, what are some of the things that you're most excited for, uh, for, for to come about to, to happen and for uh, to develop in this space? Yeah, I, I think there's a lot around, and it's happening here in society, you know, all this stuff around social equity. You know, I saw how just bafflingly disappointing and horrible, even though it looked good on paper, the anything social equity around cannabis has played out. And I'm very suspect that it's going to work even with all these great organizations. And it's not that I'm a pessimist. I just... Um, anyway, I, I didn't mean to get off track there, but a decade from now, um, hopefully COVID will be over and we can, can be on the terrace. But the one thing that's keeping me up at night is um, just all the stuff I'm seeing around technology. Like I was looking at a device the other day, these guys reverse engineered psychedelic molecules to create an algorithm that uses uh, the electromagnetic spectrum to trick your brain using non-covalent waves to make you, it was the same as a drug experiment. So I, I think 10 years from now, and, and this is in no way to take away from, you know, the earth, the firmament, the mycelium network, all the indigenous cultures, but technology is getting really crazy. And I, I don't want to say it in, in this conference. Well, I guess I will, that I don't know 10 years from now with the advancement of some of this tech, when I'm seeing something like that, like today, where we'll be in 10 years, we just spent 10 minutes in Elon Musk's head. Mm -hmm. And same indication, same thing. There'll still be addiction. There'll still be anxiety. There'll still be depression. There'll still be wars and PTSD and you name it. But will technology um, replace a lot of this in 10 years? Maybe it's 20 years out, but that's kind of what I'm already like seeing. And it's like, it's kind of crazy. Mm -hmm, definitely. Well, Simeon, thank you so much for taking the time, sharing your insights. A, a wonderful pleasure having you on. Everyone in the chat is also excited for it. So thank you again. Really appreciate it. Great. Thank you, Merrick. Thank you. Eric.